Welcome back, Troglodytes, to the Trogly's Guitar Show. Hey, it's been a while, but we have part three of the Rare Norlin Era Guitar Collection video series. This is a series when I feel I have a bunch of really choice Norlin Era Les Pauls that were limited edition runs and are very fancy, and I really just wanted to show them all in the same shot. I believe everyone has a passion in life, and I swear this is mine, because when I start seeing all of these rare guitars that I worship unhealthily <laughs> in the same shot, it just it drives me. There's something inside me that just says, do this. This is what you're meant to do. So if my channel keeps growing the way it does, I'm sure one day I will start a Trogley's museum of some sorts. But it won't just be a museum that you go to, you know, just look at guitars. It will be a museum where you can also play them. Well, the worn examples anyways. So let's go ahead and go through what all these guitars are. Our first two right here are called a THE Les Paul. T-H-E. It's like the, but you pronounce it the because it signifies, you know, dominance over all Les Pauls. I've kind of nicknamed these guys the King of Les Pauls or the King of the Customs because they're basically a Les Paul Custom and they have maple laminate sides and backs as well as all wooden appointments. There were 77 of these guitars made in total from 1976 through 1979 of which 59 were in natural, the rest of them were in wine red. Now this red one actually has a famous owner. This belonged to the guitarist of Yes, Steve Howe. And he gigged with this guitar since it was brand new until about the early 2000s when he sold it to a buddy who eventually then sold it to me. This is the crown jewel of my collection. I don't think I will get a more rare guitar than that one. The next one is my personal favorite Les Paul. This is called the Spotlight Special. Now you'll see sources saying there's 211 of these guys made. That's false. There's actually probably twice as many because I've found duplicate serial numbers. And whenever I do, there's always one in Antique Natural. And then there's one in the other finish called Antique Sunburst. Now I don't currently have a Sunburst one, but the Antique Natural ones are the more desirable ones anyways, because they have this really nice brown and cream binding. As you can see, that also runs along the neck. But they also have natural colored headstocks. They have a walnut strip running down the center, a few of them have mahogany, and then a two-piece maple top. The lore behind this model is when they were moving factories, from Kalamazoo down to Nashville, they found these maple tops that were cut too short and they decided to put walnut between them. I don't know if any of that's really true, but this is such a beautiful guitar. There's something so nice about the symmetry of them. They look like a neck through, but they are not. Our next one is the 2550th Anniversary Les Paul. They were built to commemorate the 25th year of the Les Paul as well as the 50th year of Les Paul's music career. Now, they weren't exactly correct on the dates because of research and development issues, but these are very fancy guitars, and I view this as like the first limited edition model that was mass produced, and people still find these collectible. There were 3,411 of these guitars produced from 1978 through 1979, and yes, there are a few made in very early 1980. These were made in a tobacco sunburst, which is this one, a natural color, and then wine red and black. Wine red and black are not as popular, but dang, they are hard to find. Our next two are beautiful examples of when Gibson was finally going into the historic reissue market. These are both from 1983, this one, despite its serial number starting with a 9, actually predates this one. This guitar was made from a run of guitars right before the prehistoric reissues came out. The easiest way to tell these guys apart is they have a serial number that starts with a 9 instead of a 3, but there were very few of these guitars made. Some sources are saying there's as few as 25 or so of these ones and then they eventually switched over to a serial number that begins with a 3, signifying 1983. 
Mark Knopfler of Dire Straits actually used a guitar from this run. You can see that they were trying to emulate the 50s Gibson logo on these, and the Les Paul model silkscreen is higher than normal. It looks a little bit goofy, but they were on the right track at least. This one's got quite a few changed parts, but the original Tim Shaw PAFs are still in there, as well as the original knobs. Now this beautiful guitar is from the first run of the actual Les Paul reissue lineup. Now this guitar is in excellent all original condition, very little wrong with it, and has a beautiful fretboard. The top on this one is very explosive. You can always tell an 80s top because they will have, you know, nice flame this way, but they also have like the perpendicular wood grain underneath it. You'll see that a lot in the early 80s. But here you can see where the serial number will start with a 3. So this was the 10th Les Paul reissue made in 1983. However, once again, this guitar does predate that one by just a few guitars. So technically this is a more desirable guitar compared to that one, but since this one has changed parts, it's not as valuable as that one, which is much more clean. And now we have the two interesting guitars. Most people have heard of prehistoric reissues. They might not have known like the first year was 1983 or that run that came slightly before them, but most people know about the 2550s. And if you're familiar with limited edition Les Pauls from the 70s, you've probably heard of a The Les Paul or a Spotlight Special. But these ones, I guarantee you, most seasoned collectors have never even heard of these things. Especially this second one. But this first one, I feel like I've done a lot of justice for sharing information on it. This is a Les Paul Super Custom. Now, Super Custom is a nickname for these guitars. This is the model that Neil Sean used. This isn't the guitar from his run of guitars that he used. This was actually a later made run of Super Customs that was only for Japan. So having one of these puppies in the United States is a little bit rare. This one lived in Japan its whole life and was just recently imported. As you can see, it has a lot of wear and tear to it. It used to have a Bigsby, but the original pickups are still intact. Gibson issued these without a pickup cover on the bridge pickup because that's how Neil Sean had his. Now I forget the direct details, I think there were around 100 of these made in the second run in 1984. But the first run, I also had one of those but I sold it to a good buddy. Those were done in late 79 and 1980. These guitars were built as an end run to the V Les Paul. So let's do a quick refresher here on a V Les Paul. They have a mahogany core body with maple surrounding it everywhere, highly flamed, the best woods available. These guys are built the same way. They have the mahogany core body and they have the flamed maple back and sides. Now the sides aren't too flamed on this example, but that's kind of how the second run of these guys are. But now troglodytes, this is a new one on me. I saw this and I freaked out and I had to buy it because this is something I have never seen before. It's possible it's a one-off, but I believe I've uncovered a super standard. Now I call this one a super standard because it's built the same way as a The Les Paul and a Super Custom, except for it has standard appointments. So again, that means highly figured maple top two-piece, as well as a highly flamed back. And similar to the first run of Super Customs, it has the five-piece maple neck. And this one also has the super flamed maple sides. And this thing is just absolutely terrific. It's in great shape too. Now, I'm believing this might be a custom ordered one-off. However, it's possible there could be more super standards out there as well. So why is it a super standard, you ask? Well, it still has the multi-ply headstock binding, but it has the standard trapezoid inlays. Now the fretboard is still ebony, but here we go. This is why I call it the super standard. It doesn't feel or play like a standard. It plays like a custom, but as you can see, it's the single ply binding on the front as well as on the back. So side by side to the super custom, you can see the differences there. So this guitar has me really excited. I think I found a one-off or at least a brand new model that I didn't know exist and many people don't. 
This is the same type of coil split switch that was used on the XR models, which are basically the first studios before they became studios. I've got one of those over here. You can see it's the exact same style of switch. And this has the exact same pickups as a 2550th anniversary Les Paul. So that's this guy over here. It's the Series 7 Super Humbuckers. Personally, I'm not a big fan of those pickups. This coil split is just about worthless for a tonal option because it just makes them sound really thin. But hey, at least it's there. Now we'll take a quick look at the backs of these guitars. Only three of these have mahogany necks. The rest are flamed maple. And some of these even have flamed backs. So these are very gorgeous guitars, as you can see. And due to the comments on the other two collection videos I've done, this collection is worth around $80,000 at this current time. And the honorable mentions for this video is the Headless SG. This is a famous guitar on the internet for being weird and bizarre. I happened to be able to find it and I knew I had to buy it because I was just too curious about it. And the Les Paul XR1, as I briefly showed earlier, this one's in the rare gold burst finish. The problem with the gold burst finish is that it orange peels. So a lot of these were sent back to the factory in order to be refinished. You can see how it's not a smooth finish right there. You can find Les Paul customs in gold burst, but those are very, very rare. I did happen to have one of those a while ago that was in like mint condition. But this was basically the precursor to the studio model. So I hope you troglodytes enjoyed part three of my rare Norlin era Gibson guitar collection. So as a quick recap, we have two The Les Pauls, a Spotlight Special, a 2550th Anniversary, a Super Standard, Super Custom, pre-Les Paul reissue run, and then the first Les Paul reissue run guitars. So I hope you learned something new. If you're interested in hearing how any of these guitar sounds, check out the description. I will leave the individual video tours and demos of each of these guitars. In all those videos, you'll get to see every square inch of these guitars, as well as some more in-depth history on them. Thank you, Trial Dice, for watching, and we will see you tomorrow on the next episode. Take care.